the crisis of unemployment. The average age of graduation from a Nigerian institution of higher learning is 26. A potential employee would get admission into university at 20, maybe lose a year or two due to prolonged strikes, graduate at 25. Then there's almost a compulsory gap here between graduation and NYSC because of our inefficiencies in our systems. Now, by the time the graduate is ready, you are competing for employment with previously employed workers who have lost their jobs due to economic downturn, recession, or cost efficiency restructuring across organizations. Now, jobs in certain institutions in the country have both an age and grade limitation that becomes an, an impediment to every new entrant. Now, graduate tra training programs have become almost extinct, right? Um, with employers now requiring experience that is just not possible for a fresh graduate. Recent statistics from Statista predicts that by the end of 2021, the unemployment rate in Nigeria is estimated to reach 32.5%. That's almost a third of the employable market. This figure is projected to increase further by the time we get to 2022, and data has shown that it has continued to rise year in, year out. Right? This means that it is an employer's market, and as it responds to the law of demand and supply. So basically, there are more people looking for employment than there are jobs. Now, with an, with an abundance of experienced workers losing their jobs and remaining unemployed or underemployed due to the devastating effects of recession and the economy, we have on our hands a national crisis with the potential to implode with both economic and social impact for our nation. They say an idle mind is the devil's workshop, right? And Employment can and will create the following ripple effects. Increase in crime rate. Underutilized capacity becomes available for civic unrest. Armed robbery. Financial crimes, aka Yahoo Yahoo Boys, as boys have to survive. Economic migration and a corresponding increase in mental health challenges due to resorting to mood enhancing drugs leading to drug abuse. Because an idle mind is truly the devil's workshop. Now, in the last two years, despite the lockdown due to the global pandemic, Nigeria has become the fourth leading source of immigration to Canada's skilled worker program. Nigerians remain favorites for acceptance due to our high level of education and our lingua franca being English, making it easy to score the points required for entry. So basically, we are smart people. We know how to get the work done, which is why they're going to continue to take us. We are on the verge of a brain drain. So how do we change this? The time has come for us to begin to change the curriculum of our institutions to become more entrepreneurial with a focus on work readiness skills instead of theoretical contexts and frameworks that don't translate to real life skills. It's time to introduce the concept of ideation and creativity to allow for broad based thinking to come up with solutions for some of the Nigerians biggest problems by creating jobs. We must start to create alternative pathways to wealth and sustainability through funding of business incubators and accelerator programs to increase the survival rates of startups and support the entrepreneurial process. This government-funded but privately run incubators can be created as private-public partnerships, right, initiatives that would provide business advisory, co-working spaces and frameworks and network for entrepreneurs for easier, easier paths to market. So basically, we want an entrepreneur to survive in this market. The Ministry of Labor must start to sanction organizations that have put discriminatory age limits for graduate roles to give everyone a fair playing field. So the Ministry of Interior and Labor should start to enforce the requirements of knowledge transfer from our expatriate community to ensure that the Nigerian workforce remains skilled and knowledgeable and employable to remain relevant for the future of work. Perhaps with this, we can start to drive the numbers down and truly provide an opportunity for full and productive employment and decent work for all in line with the Sustainable Development Goals 8. Wow. Uche, I must say what I find most scary when you said 32.5% is if you put that across Nigeria's 200 million population, you're talking of approximately 65 million people unemployed. Yes. That's more than the population of Syria alone, Ghana and Togo put together. You see, and the thing about it is 
people want to work, right? People deserve to earn a decent living. But when you've already put so many barriers, right, for them, how do they get on the job market? Um, we were talking, we're talking earlier about how, you know, the average age right now, to be honest, is actually around 28. And I remember the first time, you know, I became aware of that, I was dealing with the youth population, and many of them had just graduated, or were still in university, and I'll ask, how old are you? And they'll say 26. What year are you in? You're, you're telling me you're in third year of university. So my brain is already calculating. You still have one year to go. You're still going to be at home for one year. Then you're going to graduate. How do you compete in the market, right? No one would employ you at that age because they'll say you're not young. You don't have youth on your side. People want you to work with your... One of the things that youth brings is energy. But if you're already 30, maybe you're married. You already have two children. And then they want to employ you as a fresh graduate. Your priorities are different. You're thinking about your daughter, your son. You can't bring the best of you to the workplace. And, it, it, we, and then we then, the, the, there's, we don't have a conducive environment for entrepreneurship. Anyone who has tried to do any entrepreneurial venture in this country can tell you <laughs> the drama that comes with it. <laughs> you can't access funding, right? You can't pay the right people to work for you, right? And the cost of training and retraining, because sometimes you're finding skills that are suboptimal. Now, you know, just even take piggyback on what you just said about the, the people in school. You made a recommendation about reviewing what is the curriculum of today. Yep. I still think what we call education is a curriculum that was designed for the last century. I agree. 100%. A lot of what is being studied today can get you a job. Mm. Anywhere in the so, world. And, and if it's, the individuals have to figure it out. Now, if you look at the other side, they said about 13.5 million Nigerian youths are out of education. So when you have people out of education, out of employment, you have the recipe for insecurity. I was actually very shocked when the president said, young Nigerians, if you want jobs, behave yourselves. And I think that, I, I really think that he's not actually seeing the, 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 the cause and effect. Mm -hmm. the, the young people are agitated and you're seeing unrest because there is nothing to do. So you don't speak to the symptom when you haven't dealt with the cause. Yep. Right? For you to say it's not my responsibility, they should behave themselves because we can get foreign direct investment. You, there are more things than just attracting foreign direct investment. Foreign direct investment will not fix your policy. In fact, a policy that has not, you haven't addressed, are you expecting me to bring my money to your company? A lot of foreign direct investors today cannot get their money out of the economy because of dollar, dollars come. Yeah. The biggest racket is the dollar racket. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, a lot of people are caught in the middle here. So what I think is important, because we are joking with this, it's very, very important. I went to the really, really far part of town yesterday, living in Lekki. Lekki is a bubble. You might not even know that you and I are living in this pseudo-conducive environment. Going that far, you get to realize that we are only as safe as these people as engaged. And if we don't do what is needed to get them to jobs, mm -hmm. we're losing the time. And there's cyclical employment, which means that as innovation is coming, more skills are going to become redundant. And if our curriculum is not going to upgrade people, we're preparing people for a world that has passed and they're graduating but they're dated or they're graduating outdated. So currently, like right now, you, you, you can actually say, is it really worth uh, people going to university? Is it worth it? It's not worth it. What it's you'll not, gain, it's no. not worth it at all. You're no. actually better off learning a vocational skill. You are actually better off learning a vocational I, skill. I run an animation company and have the people I work with, I haven't seen their degrees. Yeah. In fact, if you have interest, passion, you're in. Mm -hmm. And it's not about whether you have a degree. Our degrees, we prepare people for certification, but not for, not for industries. Mm -hmm. And if we don't solve entrepreneurial problems, it's going to really, really hit us hard. The average Nigerian is, is actually an entrepreneur by design. They hustle. But it's always about a quick book. The thinking of entrepreneurship should be about value creation, not just about um, but, but, making the but margin. But how can you think about value creation if you can't eat? Mm. So it's easy, it's easy to say, you know, um, they should be thinking on long term. And, but if you think on, on the small scale, you see these guys who want to work, they decide, okay, I'm going to set up my cart on the road to sell food. And they have their clients. I'm one of them. But one day, the local government come, they clear them out. What are they meant to do? They're actually making an honorable living. You're not supplying any support for them. They have decided, you know what, rather than steal, rather than be a nuisance, let me actually do something on which I can feed my family. And even that is taken away from them. You know, so, so really, there's just so little hope. You shouldn't go to university, okay, I want to do a vocational skill, I want to work, I want to become an entrepreneur. But again, the system is not designed for yes. entrepreneurs. And you might spend 10 years doing a four-year course. Oh, yeah, So oh, there yeah. is that side There's of that waste side of, of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, I think what's most, what was most the problem with the situation is even for entrepreneurship, we have double-digit um, interest it, rates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not, yeah. they're not yeah. conducive yeah. For, for entrepreneurship mm. at all. If you look at the amount of money used to buy, okay, we buy, let's look at Nigeria's budget. We buy laptops and um, computers every year. Every para-startup. 
Nigeria has more than 1,500 ministries, departments, and agencies. And everybody buys computers every year. If that money was taken just to as soft loans given to people to go into entrepreneurship, we'll actually be doing a lot better than our so-called computerized remote access to government agencies, which don't even exist in the beginning. So, so I, I actually me, think I, I, even the civil service, as, it's, as it is, it's actually a place where most of what you find are duplications of roles and many people sitting down there doing nothing. So that in itself, it's a place that cannot drive an economy. I mean, have you tried to get a license? You see four weeks, it will take you two years, right? And then, then you spoke about access to credit and loans. Every time the government puts a face that there's access to credit and they collateralize it, they, they fail to understand what, what the country is. There's, there are things called matching capital. In other countries, if you're an entrepreneur, you can you have 50%, they will meet it. But to put a collateral in front of an entrepreneur that's trying to start, mm -hmm. you should be giving them tax heaven, telling them to have yeah, three years tax, tax, break. tax break so you can actually scale. Because the reality is that the future of job creation is in the hands of the entrepreneurs. The government cannot create jobs. They only create the climate for jobs. And creating that climate is actually creating this funding, access to funding, access to an enabling environment, access to skill, mm -hmm. right, on a level, let education work and feed the economy. There's a disconnect between our economy and our education. And even the tech, the, the tech industry, see what the fintech space has done. We have unicorns now that have emerged in the yeah. last few years. But guess what the government is doing? They are not having to block, use regulations, stifle people, bring in all those draconian uh, regulatory laws. Regulation is not meant to kill businesses. It's meant to empower and make them thrive. If our regulation is about getting them out of the space, you're going to be reducing jobs. And I hope they understand that. I don't I, think they do. I think their business is to regulate and their business is to control and their business is to stifle. It's not to create it's an not environment. Not even with conversation or negotiation. They, they, they throw the laws at you without first understanding the premise upon which those laws are made. You know, but you know, there's something you said about the if only they can look at the big picture. In most developed and developing economies, actually most economies, including Nigeria, right, the SME represents more than 80% of the GDP, 70% of GDP and 80% of employment. So that means really you should be focusing on a thriving and growing small to medium, even micro, micro small to medium mm -hmm. enterprise. Because that company hiring 10 people here, 20 people here, 50 people here has a knock-on effect across the entire economy. How many jobs really can be created at the Microfinance banks, the, ideally in Bangladesh, microfinance banks were very helpful in, in helping all those local farmers and SMEs assess certain kind of capital. And in fact, they functioned like companies where they were doing their risk assessment was very detailed. Now, we have a situation where our banks are only good for deposit collection. That's it. All they want is bring your money. Let's do it. So <laughs> our banks are not specialized. So banks are actually all, it's all about, let's get, it's not about this sitting down the quick money. No, the products are not, are, not, are not differentiated. Every product is similar. It's just about women account, children account. Bravo. Tony is up next after the break. Stay tuned. Thank you.